as people get to a spot in retirement where their financial security is kind of locked in and they know they're going to have enough money, oftentimes they shift from thinking about, will my money last to how do I leave it behind to my family? On today's episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning, we're going to talk about the best ways to leave money to your family and maybe some reasons why you might not want to leave money to your family. And also, we're going to cover one big mistake that we see people make in giving money to their family. Hi, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, and I've got a family financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And before we go any further, please subscribe. Helps us with YouTube and helps more people find our channel. So, John, I'm really excited about this conversation. So you've talked to, you talk to a lot of people, and so do I, who are interested in leaving money and they want to do it efficiently. So why don't yeah. you kick it off and tell us your uh, what your thoughts are? Yeah. And, and as we start this, Bridget, I just want to sort of preface it that, you know, as I said in the introduction, sometimes you start where you go like, hey, I'm starting retirement. Do I have enough? And then you get to a spot as you get a little bit older where you go, yeah, I'm going to have enough and more than enough. And now what do we do? And we're going to talk about that, I think, to start off here. But then there's also the thing of like, listen, I don't know if I have enough, but if I do, I want to leave it and how the, how we think about those things. So sort of two topics. And, and the one thing when somebody says, geez, I want to leave money to my kids, um, it, we, we ha- I find a lot of confusion perhaps on what's the best way to do it. How do these things work? And there's sort of, there's three buckets of places where people have their money into retirement, right? As you, as you get to the end of life. And the best place for people to leave money, you go, listen, I'm not going to spend all this. The Roth IRA that we have, right? It grows tax-free. If I take it out during my life, it comes out tax-free. But also if I leave it to my kids, they can take all the money out tax-free as well. So when we have folks that are in a spot where you say, hey, there's going to be some money left behind, what's the best place? Targeting that Roth IRA, I think, is the number one place to leave money behind to kids. And then close behind that is the taxable accounts. And I'm talking about things like uh, the brokerage account at Fidelity or Schwab, right, where you have a 1099 every year, you get dividends and capital gains that come off it. And why that can be a really good place is that, you know, if I've invested $10,000 in that account, now it's grown to 100000 If I sell that, I've got to pay taxes on that $90,000 of gain. But if I leave it to my kids, they can sell that $100,000 and pay no taxes under current tax law. And it's what's called in, in our jargon, a step up in basis. But they don't. They can sell that without paying any taxes. And a lot of times people forget that geez, that money can go to my kids tax-free if I if, if I don't sell it or gift it to them. So those are really the two big ways that we talk about leaving money behind behind on an efficient basis. And I don't know if that resonates with you or, or how you talk with your clients, but I'm interested in, in your take on that. Yeah, so this is an interesting conversation. We're talking, you're talking mainly about how to set up your estate in this situation. So how to do that most effectively and which buckets are best to just set up to pass down. Okay, I'm going to pass this bucket over to you. Because the Roth IRA is a great bucket to ta- to pass over. And especially if you have some high income uh, kids. So if you've got right. some kids who, geez, they're doing better than you ever, you know, like, oh, I'm really impressed with this kid. So those are great kids, great, great people to get um, Roth IRAs. Everybody will appreciate them, but the high income people, especially. And then the uh, taxable accounts, you know, those are always wonderful. And the thing about those that are one of the things about those, but if you inherit one, is that it's so flexible. You can just take the money and use it right away, which people appreciate. And the uh, there's a step up in basis, like you mentioned, so you don't have to worry about uh, paying capital gains, et cetera. You, you just, as you were talking, Bridget, you, you reminded me, it's actually of a friend that I know, and I was talking with her. She's a little bit uh, older. She's retired now. And she says, hey, I'm, I'm interested in leaving money in my estate to, to a charity as well as my kids. And we were just having this conversation over dinner one night. And, and, and she was saying, hey, you know, I've got this Roth IRA. And it's like just the right amount that I want to go to. I think it was to church that she was giving it to. So I think what I'm going to do is do that. And she just wanted to ask my opinion. And I said, well, listen, 
one of the one of the least favorite ways of leaving money to family is in an IRA, uh, a regular IRA, because then they have to pay taxes on it. And in this case, for my friend, if she had had even carved off part of her regular IRA and left that to charity, the charity takes the money out. They don't have to pay any taxes because they're a nonprofit, right? So rather, if, and if they, she leaves her Roth IRA to her kids, the Roth IRA goes to the kids tax-free. So what she was thinking in her head, it made total sense, right? I've got this little bucket, it totally fits. That's what I want to give to charity. But she would have given a tax-free asset a tax-free investment to the charity, which is already tax-free, and she would have given her IRA, which is fully taxable, to her kids that are going to have to pay taxes. So that's that's one of the places where IRAs, and, and again, listen, if I leave an IRA to my kids, they're pretty happy to get the money, but it's, there's some tax consequences. So a little five-star tip that if you're interested in leaving money to charity in your estate, then using an IRA can be a really great way to do that. Yeah, I love this tip. It's really a wonderful tip. The other thing is that it's um, changing the beneficiaries on your IRA is quite easy. And so it's another reason why I like it. So if you decide you want to change which charity you want to give it to, you can just change the beneficiary on your IRA. And most IRAs, you can set a certain amount or a percentage so it's, you don't have to give your whole IRA to the charity of your choice. The other uh, things I just want to keep in mind, though, are this is better for major charities versus the local theater group. You yeah. know, like the, it's got to be a, a charity that's somewhat established. It can't be just uh, something that it's got to be around when you die, basically. And like the local, the upstart, they might have a hard time handling it, et cetera. So yes. this is a great one for churches are all set up for this. And because they can, even if it's a small church, through their denomination, through the Lutherans or whichever, whoever they're associated with, uh, they've got the umph to handle these kinds of donations. You know, th- this is, uh, as I were talking about this, maybe we'll do a whole episode on leaving money behind, like what it looks like. These are some really great tips on on doing that. I wanted to circle back on one thing that, and, I, and as I was thinking about this, when somebody says to me, hey, John, we'd like to leave money to our kids. Uh, in some cases you go, listen, I'm not sure if I'm going to spend this all during my life, but if I don't, I want it to go to the kids and hey, here's the ordering. Roth IRA is great. And brokerage account next. There's other times where you get to a spot in life and you go, I'm never going to spend all my money. I'm going to leave some money behind to the kids. How do we be efficient with that? One of the things that we always bring up with folks that are in that position is saying, listen, yes, we can set it up just like we talked about. So the money gets left behind to your kids in 10 or 20 or 30 years. But we encourage people to think about if you're in that spot and I've got more than enough, you should at least think about making gifts to the kids today while you know while you're currently around and and think about this we've got somebody who's in we just having the same conversation a week or two ago and their clients in the mid 70s and they said well geez we want to listen we're not going to spend the money leave it behind their kids are approaching retirement and trying to figure out how to get there and i happen to happen to know the the kids separately and uh and i said to the client well listen absolutely, we can leave this money behind, but you can give to anybody any year, you can give $16,000 per person without any gift taxes or anything else. So a married couple could give 16,000 each, they could give 32,000 to their to their son in this case. And if they wanted to leave money to their daughter in law, they could do the same thing to, to the daughter in law tax free. And think about how useful that money might be for the kids that are 40 or 50 or even 60 as they're getting into retirement or trying to remodel their basement or these sorts of things. And so rather than, hey, let's leave money behind in 30 years, where are the kids going to be in 30 years? Probably sitting in the same seat that mom and dad are in right now. Hey, we're already retired. We're, you know, we've lived our, we're, we've got it going on. Whereas right now, hey, maybe a ten or a twenty or a thirty thousand dollar gift would be a huge benefit. Plus, mom and dad then get to see that money being used. Not the right answer for everybody, but it, you should at least consider that if you're in that spot. I think. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, I had one uh, client situation where they had most of their money in IRAs and Roth IRAs, and so they didn't have much in taxable money. 
and they wanted to give their money kids for down payments or kids were having kids and they wanted to, you know, help them buy houses. And so they ended up um, taking money out of their, taking the gift money out of their Roth IRAs because they could take it out tax-free and they happened to be in a 12% bracket. So if they took it out, they took as much as they could out of the, the IRA, but they didn't, we didn't really want to launch them into the 10% higher tax bracket. So uh, we took the money from the Roth IRAs, even though usually you like to keep the money in Roth IRAs as long as possible, but this was a great idea. Like it was a great time to take the money out because it'd be tax-free uh, for the clients to take the money and then they could just give it to the kids or, or if they wanted to do something else with it, that would have been fine too. So it's counterintuitive, but it worked out in this situation. Such a great reminder that this is all unique to everybody, right? These are, right. you know, ideas to take and your situation, everybody's individual situation is different. I want to make sure that we, we tell there's one big mistake that we've seen people make a, a number of times as we're talking about this concept. And we just, I just got done saying, hey, gifting money to kids makes can make some sense. The one big mistake, do not make this error is we, we've had people where they, they get to the end of life and you go, listen, you know, I, I know that it's going to be a short time horizon. And if, if you've got something that you bought a long time ago where it has, has a low cost, right? I bought some property and now it's gone way up in value. And geez, I want that to go to my kids. Gifting that while you're alive, uh, that is not a great way to do it if there's a great big gain that's built into it. And, so, and we had had a, a client, we actually had the, the child as a client and mom had had bought some property years ago and it went from, you know, they bought it for 50,000. Now it's worth 500,000, something like this. And said, geez, I want that to go to my family. And then so made a gift of that during their lifetime. And what happens is when mom passed away, then rather than getting that step up in basis and being able to sell it with no taxes, the kids now were in a position where if they ever wanted to take money out of that, uh, or make a sale on that, they had to pay taxes on most of the most of the value was all taxable to them. So making gifts can be a great thing, but be really careful that of that that you know it's jargon, but that step up in basis can be a huge tax savings. You know, it, it can be literally tens of thousands of dollars by being smart about that. Yeah, so you can see uh, mom or dad wants to gift the farm because they don't need the farm anymore and they don't want to take care of it. Avoid but, probate, making a gift, right? Don't worry yeah. about some of these things. But geez, you might end up paying a lot more in taxes by uh, doing it before you die. And I'm sure your kids would be happy to uh, contribute to the upkeep, et cetera, uh, so that they can inherit it um, and, and get the step up in basis and save a ton of money on taxes rather than waiting until you pass away. So yes. uh, that seems like a great place to wrap up. I am Bridget Sullivan Mermel, and I own a family financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm John Shear. I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And if you like what you hear on our show, Bridget and I are both members of the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. To find an advisor in your area, you can check out acplanners.org. And please subscribe.